What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Title Gardens. This is going to be kind of a rough building update. We've been super busy with 10 different projects seemingly around here, and there's so many more that are in the works. And I guess that's part of the reason why I haven't done a lot of building updates, is there always seems to be something just around the corner that I want to get done before talking about everything that's been going on. But I think we're finally at that point where there's actually some stuff worth talking about. So anyway, let's just jump right into all this. So the first section that we can talk about is right here we've got our packing station. And this packing station is a good 40 feet long. It is a combination of aluminum T-slot from Alufab as well as a quartz counter. And we finally got all of that situated and in place. One of the big, I guess, regrets that we've had from the greenhouse system next door is that we never really allocated that much space to the shipping process. Before, it wasn't that big of a deal because we weren't doing a lot of shipping. I mean, it was just a kind of a startup company. A busy day would have been like five boxes. These days, a busy day would be more on the order of 60 boxes. And ideally, we would like the capacity to do over 100 boxes because sometimes those 60 box days are, in reality, 120 box days split up over two days because we physically can't pack that many boxes. So the idea behind this entire area is to both have enough infrastructure to really move a lot of the shipping volume through, but also to build an aquarium system that's designed to house effectively everything that we're going to have on the website. That's the idea anyways. That takes us to what we're looking at right here. This is one of the five aquarium stands that we're going to be building for this section. This is the upside down, by the way, if you didn't know. That's why the things look like they're not in one level. There's going to be four leveling casters on the corners, and then there's four just adjustable feet in the middle legs. Uh, this stand measures 10 feet by 4 feet, and like I said, there's going to be five of these tanks in total. You can see the pile of aluminum that we still have to construct. We were waiting on a couple of screws to attach the leveling casters. And once we get those sometime later today, we're gonna go ahead and finish up everything that we need. These tanks, when they're all put together, they're gonna be 500 gallons a piece. So this whole system is going to be something in the ballpark of 2,500 gallons, similar in volume to all the others. As I mentioned before, Alufab was the one that put together this kit. And I like the way that they packaged everything because each of the different sections are labeled and they're packaged together. So one set of legs, for example, would be for one stand. So when it came time to unpack everything and then get stuff organized for assembly, it was really easy. You just grab one of each and that makes a stand. We've been doing this a really long time now. We've probably done, I don't know, close to 20 stands perhaps. So in designing these, I made them intentionally super simple to assemble with very few of the corner braces and the 45 degree angled sections, all of that stuff, because all of that just adds complexity. And instead of going with a low profile aluminum stand with a lot of those corner pieces, we just decided to go with an extra thick one and a half inch by three inch or three inch by three inch profile. And that really just did away with the need for a lot of the corner pieces. One of these stands only took us a half an hour to put together, whereas before, with a more complicated stand, it could take significantly longer, especially if you make mistakes. Moving our way from our packing area, which was here, along with our new set of tanks, which are eventually going to go in, we can swing around, and this is our quarantine section. If you've seen some of our last videos, you saw the assembly of this guy, which is our biggest quarantine. And this one is pretty much ready to go. It's been cycling now for a few weeks, and I think that the chemistry is all dialed in. Next tank over. This tank, uh, as of an hour ago, was full, and the, uh, the majority of the corals in there were LPS, and it 
legit took forever for us to get through the cycling process. A lot of it was just kind of down to neglect. Uh, we kind of just lost track of the of the dipping schedule. So the stuff in there kind of hung out for a good hmm, six months. <laughs> Usually we would only do a quarantine for about two months, but this little batch took extra long. And in that time, a lot of the euphilia and stuff grew to huge proportions. And I'll show you um, where those got relocated to in a sec. Got our next pseudo quarantine. And I say it's more of like a pseudo quarantine because um, ever since we got these Nexus burst anemones in here, they were doing so well in this tank that it almost became irrelevant how the other corals in that quarantine did. So as long as uh, we were able to, to propagate those, this effectively became an anemone tank and all the stuff that, that goes into the normal quarantine becomes kind of like a pre-quarantine. So it'll get dipped a few times, but when, when we're more serious about moving them over, we're gonna go and relocate a lot of those, which are mostly LPS. Those will go into the next stage of quarantine and then eventually into our, into our farming systems. Next tank here is Becca's tank. I'm not gonna say too, too much about it because I'll just leave that to her but it is cycled. There are clownfish and many more fish are going to be added shortly. Moving right along, we have our, I guess this is like a 500 to 600 gallon show tank. We are just in the process now of doing the aquascape for this guy, but we've added a, a group of tangs. There is three Tamini tangs, one baby Vlamingi, and a black tang. We are planning to add one more tang in kind of the distant future. We want to add one Achilles tang and a whole bunch of Antheas. We'll also add a few Rasses here and there as well, just to kind of control the, the little creepy crawly count. Because uh, once when this tank was completely empty, it just became this pretty awesome breeding pit for um, amphipods. Every square inch of this tank had colonies of them and they equally spaced themselves out. They all, they all carved out their little territories. And I figured like the minute that we add a RAS or something like that, they're gonna get annihilated. But yeah, it's they just evenly space themselves out through this entire system. But like I said, I plan to add quite a lot more rock, rock structure in here. Again, this is a peninsula tank. This is gonna be primarily a mixed LPS style reef big wavy stuff is what I'm going to be going for. And a lot of fleshy, meaty corals like the trachees, the scolies, the canthophilia, and, and the like. Nice, nice. Moving on once again. We are looking at the Euphilia show tank. And this show tank just got some new additions in the form of some hammers that just came out of the QT. The green one in particular has probably, I don't know, gotten triple the number of heads. I'm looking forward to this guy really growing in. I'm, I'm at this point where I'm worried about adding more for the simple fact that a lot of these guys are going to grow. And you can keep Euphilia together, but you don't want to go too crazy tight because they do sting each other to some degree and it's not a perfect situation. But if you were going to stack coral upon coral, euphilia, it can be done. So I'm kind of at that tipping point of do I stack them or do I give them plenty of space from one another? Swinging around to the other side, what we have going on is a the beginnings of a Ganiopora dominated tank. This is where we've kind of put our two prison fish. These are kind of known meanies. We've got our magnificent fox face, as well as the powder blue tang. The powder blue came from Nathan's aquarium. It was having some sort of weird illness, but we were able to get that taken care of. We put it through our fish quarantine system for about two weeks, treating it with formalin, and that really did help it. So he's all clear now, and eventually we're probably gonna add some more fish. I don't have a solid plan for that just yet though. Going back a minute to this um, euphilia tank, 
In there is a fox face, an algae blenny, and a mimic tang. And I do, again, plan to, to put more fish into there, but no clear plans, not like in this big peninsula show tank where we have a kind of a, a better game plan. So if you guys have ideas for stocking these two um, bookend show tanks, let me know. Like I said, not really a fish guy. Not really a fish guy. So I'm very malleable when it comes to fish choices, as long as they don't eat my corals. Bonus points if it's pretty. Our farming systems are doing really well. They're not a lot different, but they're going to be. This tank in particular, these four grow out tanks, they are going to be getting a major upgrade in lighting. I plan to install on each one four Orphic bars. And once we get those going, that's going to substantially increase the lighting profile of this tank. Effectively, what used to be a pretty LPS heavy system is going to be more SPS focused. Currently, only maybe two of these tanks have a lot of SPS in them. And the show tank at the very far end has some SPS as well. But this entire system, I think, is going to be about 80% SPS by the time that we're all said and done. Moving on. Our next system is filling out, and it's going to fill out quite a bit faster once we start moving a lot of the LPS out of the neighboring system to grow out into here. Not exactly sure when all that lighting is going to come into play, but we're thinking maybe within the next month or so we'll be taking a look at that. So once that lighting uh, on the older frag system gets installed a lot of the lps are going to make its way over to here we've got a few things growing but really it's only this one aquarium that's getting full the others are mostly empty right now okay swinging around we have our big sps show tank and this guy is doing really well. In the comments of the last video about this many, many moons ago, uh, some folks were commenting about how there was a huge, ridiculous outbreak of cyano. And I kind of chuckled because there was hardly any to start with. But on top of that, it is one of the easiest things to solve that I didn't even really mention it. It was practically insignificant because all we needed to do was just to add a little bit more flow and it would disappear. What we've done is we've added in six pumps, six power heads. I believe there are four of the AI, um, what are those things called? The AI Nero 5s. And we added two of the Siche Voyager 10s to blow across the bottom. And pretty much instantly, all the cyano disappeared. In that time, so I'm looking at maybe, what, two months? I have siphoned this tank once. Once in two months. And I'll show some macro footage of some of the colony growth. But this tank is pretty much getting clear. The only thing that we're waiting on at this point is just time and patience. And occasionally, once we get some more interesting acro colonies, or acro frags, I should say, we'll start gluing them into place. Plenty of room for planting here. Lastly, moving on, we have our fish QT. And we had just taken in a shipment of fish, mainly a lot of like the utility guys. So we got, I think, six fox faces, six of a few different types of wrasses. So that's, we got some six lines, we got some millineris, we got some leopards what else did we get we got a few damsels just some regular old yellow tails and then we started to get uh, some of the more decorative stuff so as i mentioned when we we're talking about the peninsula show tank we got some of the liar tail antheus and also that uh, achilles tang i was really really worried about uh, both the antheus and the the tang because i remember that when we, when we're medicating these guys 
that a lot of times the medication cuts down on the oxygen content in the water. And so last night I was just thinking, oh no, I totally forgot about that aspect of it. So I came out here close to midnight and I raised up the power heads in there so that they're sucking in a little bit of air. And I also ordered um, some air pumps for the other system, for the other four tanks up top. So hopefully we won't have any issues. Unfortunately, in this big shipment of, I don't know, dozens and dozens of fish, one of them showed up dead. It was a little damsel. And then overnight, we did lose one of the antheas. But hopefully, we won't lose any more. That's the fingers crossed. It's the first 48 hours that gives me the most consternation when it comes to, you know, bringing in wild caught fish and then getting them through quarantine. Super stressful process for me. Uh, as far as like the, the decoration stuff, I decided just to go get some some uh, fake aquarium decor that's relatively smooth to the touch because I didn't want them to be uh, s slashed up, but you know if they came in and started scraping or anything like that. So a lot of the, these aquarium decorations, I know that there's there's plastic plants, you guys. Relax, it's fine. But this all came from Aquatop. I like the the coral decoration a little bit more than I like the the plastic plants. All right, that effectively is a quick update of what's going on here. I shot this video intentionally differently than I would normally do because I wanted to catch what this place sounded like. Down the road, I'm going to be doing a pretty, pretty major HVAC update to this building, like really major. And right now, for example, the air conditioner is running and it fills this entire building with noise. And that's one thing that I'm trying to cut out entirely. So this is kind of as much for um, my chronicling purposes than anything. But I wanted to hear what this place sounds like at its absolute quote unquote worst before I start fixing stuff and I forget what it used to be like. So anyways, that does it from here. Hope you guys are all doing well. Happy reefing.